happy 4th of July or happy Independence Day, whichever you want to call it. It's July 4th. Are you guys going to shoot fireworks off today? I am. I don't know that I'll go to a parade, but hey, it's parade season, so maybe we will. But whatever you do, just be safe, okay? Hey, before we get to our lesson, let's talk about really the only announcement that's happening right now is it's VBS. Don't forget, if you want to be a part of our virtual VBS, you need to sign up because we want to make sure and put a kit together for you. Go to cag.org slash events and sign up today. There's still time. There's also time if you want to join us for our evening experience. Our Press Play Family Experience is each evening, July 12th through the 16th at 6.30. We need to make sure that there's a parent or guardian coming with you. So go online and sign up today because we're going to have so much fun gathering, having drama and activities and games and doing a short rotation like we used to do. So it'd be a lot of fun and you won't want to miss that. Let's pray before we get to our lesson. So why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity that we can celebrate today. God, I pray that you would use this lesson to show each of us how you want to use us in great ways. I pray that kids' eyes are open to hear your word today. And even myself, God, let me hear it new today, Father God. We give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, won't you stand up and worship with me? Come on, everybody up.
we say and the prayers we pray let the work of our hands spread love all across the land if we want to make a difference if we want to take a stand and learn to serve each other like jesus said we should do love be love and welcome to our new series called Unusual. So you may be thinking, that's an unusual name for a series. Well, throughout the whole month of July, that's gonna be our name of our series. You probably noticed that I'm in a unusual place today. But what does unusual mean? You guys know? That's right. Unusual means unexpected or something uncommon. Just like we don't usually record outside. Sometimes we do but you might see some unusual and unexpected things happen in this series. We're gonna be talking all about the unexpected things that God chooses to do. And we actually have something unusual we wanna show you right now. We have some friends who are going to help us out today. But right now, we're gonna have some friends show you some unusual and maybe unexpected talents. Watch this. Hi, I'm Tanya and I can make the hula hoop come back to me. Here we go. I can greet you in different languages. Hello! So at the ka. Konnichiwa! Ni hao ma! Hola! Gamusta! Aloha! Hi, I'm Miss Felicia and I'm going to add a bunch of numbers on the calculator. Here we go! And this is my talent, hidden talent. <laughs> All right, hey guys, so my name is Bethany. I'm oh, Bethany, you were over here. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, hey guys, so I'm gonna show you a little hidden talent of mine. I'm going to be cup stacking blindfolded on a surface. So let's see how this goes. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Alright. Well, good morning, kids. You came to Dr. Mark's office to see me. I'm so glad you're here. Ah! Hey, hey, what are you, what are you doing? That's my wallet. I need... Oh! Oh! Okay. No! Oh! Oh! So that was our staff showcasing some unusual and some interesting talents. And I, I'm glad they were able to do that for us. But we actually have some other special guests who are gonna be helping us out throughout this lesson. So look forward to that. Before we get into the rest of our lesson though, I want you guys to say today's big idea with me. It's gonna come up on the screen. It says, God uses unlikely people. That's gonna be kind of the theme for this whole series is how God does unexpected things and uses people in unexpected ways. Now check out Carl with our Bible story. I can't wait, I can't wait. <laughs> hey Carl. Hi Andy, how are you? Good, I'm, I'm good. You gonna ask me how I'm doing? How are you? <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so excited. Excited? Excited for what? Um, <laughs> I thought it was obvious. What? That I would be searching for the most elusive and sought after creature on the planet. Tony the Tiger? No, of course not. I'm talking about Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Yes, Bigfoot. It's now my mission to find him or her. You mean the mysterious eight foot creature that lives in the mountains and never been caught? Yes, ma'am. Well, even if Bigfoot was real, what makes you think you're qualified to catch such a huge, mysterious and unusual creature? How about a letter from the guy who's in charge of the government? You mean the president? Yep. Well, if that was the case, I'd probably believe you, but I highly doubt the president of the United States would ever even... Wait, that letter's from the... President of the United States asking me, Carl, to lead the search for Bigfoot. Wow, Carl, I'm literally, I'm blown away. That's, um, I'm sorry I doubted you. That's crazy. No worries, Andy. I know it must have seemed pretty unusual. And that's our theme. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely pulled a David on me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Wait, a David? What does that mean? Well, the story of David when he was anointed as king, it was very unusual for many reasons. Oh, in what ways? Well, let's look in first and second Samuel. A David was a king, right? He was one of the most famous. Well, who was the king before David? Good question. He was a man named Saul. Oh, I remember him. He was the first king Israel ever had. That's right. But unfortunately, Saul was not a very good king. But God was going to give Israel a new king. All right. Well, now it's time for King David. You better watch out, King Saul. There's a new king in town. Well, what do you mean, well? Well, yes, King David was a warrior. But before he was known as King David, the great warrior, he was known first and foremost as young David, the shepherd boy. Whoa, really? He sure was. King Saul was handsome. He was tall. He was a good warrior. He was basically exactly what you think a king would look like. So you're saying I look like a king? Yeah, Carl, that's exactly what I'm saying. Carry on, my little subject. Well, God told Samuel, one of the prophets, that it was time to anoint a new king. What does, a, <clears throat> what does anoint mean? It was a special ceremony type of thing that people would do specifically for people who were picked by God or anointed by God. Got it. So God told Samuel it was going to be David? Not exactly. God told Samuel to go to Bethlehem and find a man named Jesse. Hey, I'm not someone that was from Bethlehem. I, it, it was a name, it was it like started with J. Is it Jesus? No. Okay, you keep thinking about it. Anyway, when Samuel got to Bethlehem, he found the man named Jesse, and he found all of his sons, except for the youngest son, and his name was David. But David wasn't there. What was he doing? Like I said before, he was a shepherd, so that means he was out taking care of the sheep. Awesome, so what happened next? Well, when Samuel realized that none of the sons there were the ones that he was sent by God to anoint, he asked Jesse if he had any more sons. So they went and got David? They sure did. And when Samuel met David, he knew that he was the one that God wanted to be the next king. <laughs> that's so cool. So that's the end of the story? Not even close. You see, David was around 15 years old when he met Samuel. Wait, what? 15 years old? A king can't be 15 years old? That's a child. That's a baby boy, Andy. That's what made this so unusual. Not only was David really young, but he was the youngest son, and he wasn't even a warrior like Saul. He was just a boy who took care of sheep. And he was going to lead the whole kingdom of Israel? Yep, and this was just the beginning of the amazing story of King David. He became the greatest king in the Bible and a man after God's own heart. Jesus! Oh, right, the greatest king after Jesus, of course, yeah. 
No, I remember now. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so... No way. Okay, you're right. But how's that possible? Were they related? As a matter of fact, Carl, they are, and Jesus was born into the family line of David. <laughs> wow, that's unreal. There's so much about David that I didn't know. Well, good for you. We'll be talking about David all month long, but you know what, Carl? What? You know how I didn't believe right away that you were chosen to be the leader for the search of Bigfoot? Well, people found David being chosen as king to be just as unusual. I guess I never thought about it like that. David was definitely a questionable choice. It's kind of cool how God chooses people that you wouldn't quite expect. They have such important jobs like running the kingdom. It is very cool. I mean, in the Bible, we see all kinds of people that get to do amazing things for God. People who had no remarkable skills, people who had physical challenges, people without impressive backgrounds, people who might seem unlikely to do great things, but God uses unlikely people. Amen to that, sister. Wait a minute, <laughs> that's our big idea. Today's big idea is God uses unlikely people. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, two three. three. God, God uses unlikely, unlikely people. people. Yeah. Right. Good job, everyone. Yeah. Andy? So I'm curious. About what? How do you expect to find a Bigfoot? Um, Andy, one does not find big, uh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot finds you. Okay, and how will Bigfoot find you? I will be using the Bigfoot call, of course. Oh. How do you do it? Let me show you. So basically, you have to put your thumbs kind of like that, you know? Gently cup your hand and you just kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tight squeeze, but not like too tight, just kind of like, eh. And you just kind of, you open it up a little and you just go, here, big foot, here, big foot. Well, I don't see how that won't work. <laughs> Have a good week, kids. See you next time. Okay, so today we learned about David. Now, did you know what his job was when he was younger? Do you remember he had a very common job, something that a lot of people did back in Israel in the day? He was a, that's right, he was a shepherd. And so in time, God gave him an unusual job, not a common job at all. And he became the king of Israel. So I wanted to talk about, because I thought this would be interesting, some unusual jobs. Are you ready for this? They're very strange and I really can't wait to talk to you about it because they're kind of cool at the same time. Alrighty, so we're going to put some slides up and I want you to guess what you think the unusual job is. You ready? Okay, look at this one. Okay, this is a dog food taster. That's right, it's this guy's job to make sure that your little Fido puppy dog enjoys his food. Can you imagine opening a can of dog food and eating it? That you're looking for the taste, that you're testing the texture, that you're trying to figure out if this is something a dog would be appealed to, like he would really want this, I mean, Maybe I might try a biscuit or one of those, you know, when you walk in those organic things that look like real cookies, but I don't know if I could eat dog food. How about you? Could you do that? I know that's a really strange job. Okay, look at this next job. This one's weird too. Okay, look at the picture. Can you figure it out? Okay, so these people are golf ball divers. Now, at first it sounds like a really great job to have, right? You put on scuba gear, you go into the ponds, you know, you ever seen those golfers go by and they hit the ball and it goes into the pond and they're like, Arr! and they get really mad and it's kind of funny to watch them freak out. Well, these are the people who dive into the pond to get the golf balls back. But if you think about that, the water is murky, it's dark, and if you're in the south, there could be alligators in the pond or snakes. Like that sounds a little dangerous now. At first it sounded kind of fun, but now it sounds a little scary. And if you're in the north, well, water could be really, really cold in October or November if you're playing the game then. So I don't know if I'd want that job, would you? Okay, this one. This one you might like. Look at this picture. Okay, this looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? It's a water slide tester. So this person's job is to test water slides. Now at first that sounds amazing too, right? Especially if it's really tall. But think about that. Have you ever been on a water slide when there's not enough water and your legs kind of drag and you have to push yourself along? Or 
Worse yet, there's so much water that you're sloshing everywhere and you're just like falling off the slide. So it's this person's job to make sure that it's safe, that it's gonna be fun, that kids are gonna enjoy it, and at the same time that everything works the right way. Would you wanna go down a slide like that? I don't know, that might be fun. Okay, this one is my, this is my, my favorite one because it's so odd and strange. Okay, look at the photo. I know, right? His job is to test armpit smells. Can you imagine? It's an, an armpit sniffer. Can I just, I don't know. So the job is to make sure that people don't have body odor and so you smell their armpits to make sure the deodorant is working. I mean, that seems a little weird. You go up to a stranger and you're like, um, can you lift your arm for me? Okay, I, I don't know, I don't know. I think that's just weird and personal bubble stuff and don't really wanna know if people can smell you. I don't know, it's just really weird, really weird. I don't think I could do that job. Okay, one more job, which is just as strange. You ready? Okay, well, not strange, fun. This one looks amazing. Okay, this is the Ninja Warrior Course Tester. Now, this looks like a lot of fun. It's somebody's job to make sure that you can get through the course, right, and finish it, that it isn't so impossible that you could never finish the course. And then they have to test and make sure the angles are right and that people have enough jump to get up to the bars and that they, they just have to be strong enough to get through it. And that looks like fun. So out of all the jobs, which one do you think that you would like to do? An armpit sniffer? No, I'm joking. No, nobody wants that job. Alrighty, so we talked today about David and we see how the prophet Samuel, who was an amazing man of God that God did mighty things through, how Samuel kind of misjudged, um, misjudged David and misjudged the situation. God tells him to go to Jesse, that one of his sons is gonna be a king. He doesn't tell him which one. So he goes and sure enough, he looks at the boys and he's like, oh, that must be the king right there. And he's wrong. Oh, and he's like, oh, must be him. Nope, he's wrong there too. It wasn't until the end and he realizes, is this all your kids? These are all your boys. And so they called David in. He was out in the field being a shepherd and he comes in and Samuel was like, him? Really? Okay, and so he prays for him. So he misjudged him. And can we be honest? Sometimes we misjudge people too. Sometimes we make quick decisions and they're completely wrong. Because in the Bible, this is a really good scripture. I want you to look at this. First Samuel 16, seven, and this, and it reads, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So the difference is people tend to judge other people by the way they look on the outside, by what they wear, how they act, but really what's most important is what's deep inside of that person, their character. And that's what God looks at. He's not so much impressed with how you appear on the outside. What he cares about is how you act on the inside. What is your attitude towards him? What is your attitude when you misjudge somebody? Are you gonna ask for forgiveness? Are you gonna be open? Are you gonna uh, be different from that? Are you gonna do the hard things that God calls you to do when he asks you to do certain things that are just seems like beyond you? And David was that man that God could use. And he really grew David up and helped him to be the king and to be able to do the unusual job that seemed an impossible job. But with God, you can do anything. Okay, right now we're going to move on to Anna and um, the scripture game. Have fun. Welcome back, guys, to this new series called Unusual. Now, with the new series comes a new memory verse. So our memory verse for this series comes from Isaiah 43, 19. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little scavenger hunt game. Now, I have two helpers. Casey and Liam with me and I have another group of helpers waiting to start. So what they're going to do, my group of helpers, is going to go around the parking lot throughout this section and they're going to find pieces of our memory verse. Once they find a piece, they're going to come back and bring it to my two helpers and they're going to put it together. Are you guys ready for this game? Yeah? Is my group of people ready for this game? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah! Okay, let's start this game.
Okay, you guys can stand around them and help them. We have all You guys can verbally tell them what you think goes where. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way Wait, in just, the world just do this piece, piece by piece. piece. So we already have where I'm doing, I'm about to do something new. See, yeah, I have. You gotta listen to your friends. You gotta listen to your friends. She's telling you to put one down. I got one. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's okay, see. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take the ones that are wrong. Um, Do you make it pathway? Good job. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know if that's right. Through here, it's wrong. Okay, we have to invert. Let's read it all together, guys. Ready, set, go. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will make it in a dry wasteland. Isaiah 43, 19. Okay, who do you guys think? One person tell me. Who is saying this? God. God, okay. And what exactly is he saying? Liam. He will, um, he will make a way through your trials. He, he will help you in your troubles. Nice. Saying. Does anyone have anything else? Yeah. Five times he's going to make a way for you. Mm, he's gonna make a way. It says that, but it says he already has, right? So he already created the plans for you. Now it's up to you to follow the plans, right? Yeah, good job, guys. Yay! <laughs> hey, do you guys remember what our big idea is today? God uses unlikely people. Have you ever felt different? Have you ever felt like you were weird, like you liked something nobody else liked, or um, you know you you liked you wore things nobody else wore, or just anything that made you feel like you were the odd person out. Well, I did. Let me tell you a couple of examples. When I was in sixth grade, we were going through a season in our life when um, we were moving from one location to another. And I decided my sixth grade year, I'm telling you guys now a secret here, don't tell anybody, okay? I wore in my sixth grade year a stocking cap to school every day, every day, over my head. It was a green stocking cap. I still remember what it looked like. I loved it. I thought I looked cool. I wanted to wear that green stocking cap to school every day. Nobody else wore one. Everybody thought I was weird, but I didn't care. That's what I liked. That's what I wanted to wear. When I was in high school, my senior year of high school, I decided I was going to wear an army flak jacket to school every day. You guys know me. You've seen me enough. You know that I'm not like in dresses all the time. I'm in jeans and t-shirts and I decided I thought an army flak jacket would look cool. Nobody else wore one. Everybody thought I was weird, but hey, it's what I liked. So we can all feel weird about different things at different times. But you know what? God still, God created you like that. He created you to like the things you like and to be who you are. And he still wants to use you. In fact, he created you to use you. 
So I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 9 and 10. Now, if you have the NIV, you can read along with me. However, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. And it says, Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. You know, if you were a person that walked around all the time and said, you know, I got this, I'm all together, um, I understand, I don't need anybody, I can do it all myself, you know, that's really not what God wants. In fact, in this scripture, we see that God says he wants to use our weaknesses. He wants us to understand that there are things that we can't do on our own. That's when we rely on the strength of God, the power of God working in us. So when you feel a little different, when you feel like you may um, like different things than other people, it's okay because God is going to use you just as you are in the things that you like in, in your weaknesses and in your strengths. So let's look at one more passage of scripture. I want you to turn to Ch James chapter 4 verse 6 and we're going to read it this time out of the NIV version. James chapter 4 verse 6 says, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Why is it that God was able to use David in such great ways? Well, it's because David recognized that he couldn't do it on his own. David humbled himself before God and said, God, I need you. And God was able to take that and give great power and strength to David so that he was able to lead the people in such great ways. And God wants to do the same thing for you and I. He wants us to humble ourselves before him and say, you know what, I can't do it on my own. I need you, God. And he's gonna take that and use you in amazing ways. Mr. Isaiah is gonna come right now and he's gonna pray with us. Hey guys, so before we get into prayer, I have a picture for you. Can you guys tell me what this is? What do you guys think this is? I know, it's an ant. Well, it's actually not just any kind of ant. It's a unique kind of ant. This is a leaf cutter ant. And this leaf cutter ant is actually one of the strongest animals in the world. So I know before you think I'm crazy, let me explain. So leaf ant cutter ant for its size can actually lift up to 20 times its own body weight. So to give you an uh, illustration of what that means, it's like a first grader, like a six or seven year old child, being able to lift up a grand piano, a piano, all on their own. That would be pretty strong, right? That's how strong a leaf cutter ant is. So if they were like as big as we were, they could do that. So that's why these are so strong, such strong animals. And it's pretty amazing, right? So as we think about how God uses us, and like Pastor Tony was saying, how we are strong in our weaknesses. Like these ants, they look weak, they're small, but they can do some pretty amazing things with that strength that's in them. But with us, the, if we were just like really strong people, if we just thought we were these strong people all the time, like we could maybe do some things, but we wouldn't rely on God's strength as much. If we could do everything on our own, or if we thought we could do everything on our own, we wouldn't rely on God's strength. When we rely on his strength, when we see ourselves as, um, as, we, as much as we need him, then that allows God to use us in a powerful way. And we wouldn't just be 20 times our normal strength. We have unlimited strength because God is unlimited in the way he can help us. So we're going to pray now. And we're going to pray for a few different things. We're going to pray that we would be able to humble ourselves and realize our dependence on God's strength so that God can use us and we're, next thing we're going to pray about is to help see ourselves in a better way, in the way that God sees us. If you're, uh, we're looking down on ourselves and we don't think God can use us, then we're just going to hurt ourselves, right? But God wants to use unusual, unlikely people to do His work. And then we're going to ask God to help us um, share that with others, to use the gift and talents that He's given us to uh, help other people around the world, right? So we're going to pray over these things. So why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads. 
God, I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you that you are uh, infinitely powerful and you're not limited in the way that you can use us, God, and that you want to use us. You want to use unlikely people just like us. We can look at the examples in uh, nature, how they do amazing things, but no, you want to do even more amazing things through us, God. So I pray you would help us to uh, humble ourselves and to not think of ourselves more uh, greatly than we should, but to realize that we are so dependent on you for everything, God. If we really think about it, <clears throat> we have a reason to thank you for every good thing in our lives. And you can take us to go beyond our normal ability to really impact people for eternity. God, help us to see ourselves in the way that you see us, God. You love us so much. You see uh, our potential and where you're trying to take us. And you don't look down on us because we're different. Or maybe um, we do things that other people don't do. God, you still love us. And you're constantly transforming us into your image, into uh, a glorious image that you can use for your purpose, God. Pray you would help us to use these gifts and talents. Help us to and train us up to help other people to show love and kindness and to share uh, God's message of Jesus with other people. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, now we're going to go to a fun game that Anna's going to bring with us. And I think she has some special guests as well. Let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to do a game and I have my fifth graders to help me with this game. So. We're gonna play charades. Now I have Yolinda here and Ty, and they're gonna be our first contestants in this game. So for example, I'm gonna give you an example of this game if you haven't played charades yet. They're gonna pick something from a bucket, let's say an animal, and they're gonna try and act out an animal, and our friends here are gonna guess what that animal is. Now, I'm gonna give you another example. if. Linda here picks out a shark. She's going to act out a shark. And Ty here is going to pick out brushing teeth. They have to guess what that is. And you're right. It's a shark brushing teeth. That will be the answer. So are you guys ready for this game? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Let's start. No talking. Set. Go. Pick out your card. Read it. I'll give you a moment to read it. Give you a moment to read it. You got it? You got it? Okay, put it on the side. Ready? Go. A bunny. A, bunny. a, bunny. a, bunny. a rabbit. Um, a, bunny a bunny playing bunny soccer. soccer. A bunny, bunny playing soccer. Dog soccer. A baby. A dog A dog soccer. A dog A dog soccer. A dog going A dog playing catch. A dog soccer. A dog what? A dog soccer. Is a dog playing soccer? A dog, a dog kicking. A dog playing soccer. Kicking a ball. Soccer ball. A ball. There it is. A dog kicking the ball. <laughs> okay, let's get two other people. You guess, and then let's get Obina. Okay. So I give you a moment to look at your card. Yes, and then give it to me once you looked at it. Okay. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Go! Oh, you gotta guess, you gotta do that! Are you flipping a book? Yeah. Are you flipping a book? Cat? Dog um, reading a book? A cat 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 reading a book? Okay, let's have Liam and then Casey. Go ahead. Grab your card. <laughs> you guys are on a roll. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I got a funny one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go. Uh, brushing oh, teeth. Dog crawling. Brushing teeth. Oh. Crawling. You can't make noises. Dog. Bunny. A bunny. Teeth. A bunny a brushing his teeth. A rabbit brushing his teeth. A brushing his teeth. A rabbit brushing his teeth. Good job. Okay. Let's have. Daniel, you think he's come and pick one? You guys are on a roll. Okay. I had the same one as you. As okay. You, you read it? <laughs> oh no. Okay. Oh boy. Where's okay. Now? Uh, this one might be a little challenging. Okay. Go. Runner. Runner. Play a no, push up. Push up. Play a oh, snake. 
Snake? Shark out of water. Snake? Um, <laughs> a shark 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 um, <laughs> shark 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 Okay, look at your card. Hmm. <laughs> Make sure you got it. Yeah, you got it? Face. Okay, you got it? Okay. You know what that is? Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Licking an ice cream. Eating ice cream. Oh, burpees. Eating ice cream. Oh, oh running. Uh, uh, run. Burpees? <laughs> Cheetah, What's licking. eating ice cream? Cheetah? A cheetah. A panther. Uh, 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 an athlete eating ice cream. A jaguar. A, 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 a peeper. A monkey. A, 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 a monkey um, eating ice cream. A gorilla. A gorilla uh, eating um, ice cream. Um, uh, it can't be a rabbit. A, a wolf. A dog. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm guessing. A chihuahua. No. No. A lemur. A koala. A jaguar. A hamster? I think it's a small animal. Is it a squirrel? Ah, she got it! <laughs> she got it! Okay, should we do one more? Like <laughs> one more. Who has not gone yet? Okay, you can I come. Gone. You, just, you already went! Yeah. No? I have to go. Okay, come on. You got this. Okay, you may pick a card. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Set, go. Dance. Oh, the disco. A kangaroo. A, a kangaroo. A kangaroo doing the disco. A horse. A kangaroo. Oh, he got it. Horse dancing. Horse dancing. Horse is dance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they do dance if you like. Oh, I think it. This was a great start to our new unusual series. Kind of unusual to have some kids helping us, but it was so much fun and I'm so glad that they got to be a part. I want to challenge you to look around you this week for unusual things that you see happening. If you join us on Sunday mornings here in person, bring something to us and let us know because I see unusual things, you see unusual things. It might be interesting to find out, okay? I hope to see you back next week. Don't forget, you still need to sign up for VBS. We'll see you again. Bye.